Oh, good morning, everyone. This is Ian Trevethan. I am the Education and Outreach Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And look, I'm actually back in the museum, which is thrilling for me. I was not doing well doing this from my basement. So it's really, really, really nice to be back in my correct surroundings. Uh, while I like to be home when it's home time, sometimes you can overdo it. So it's nice to be back in the museum. Um, uh, I, I was reviewing some of my last couple of uh, live feeds and I've got to apologize for the low energy there. Um, <laughs> the last couple of ones that I did were <laughs> pretty boring. So uh, thank you for everybody who stuck with me while I was at home uh, doing live feeds in my basement. I don't know that I will repeat those. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, one of the things I noticed about yesterday is I kept referring to Charles H. Sternberg as George. It gets confusing. My brain wasn't working well. So we're going to pick back up kind of where we were yesterday talking about the Sternberg legacy. And we're up now to George F. Sternberg, George Fryer Sternberg, who was um, the uh, curator of the Museum of Collections here, of museums, I guess. I think he was the second curator of museums here. Um, we'll, we'll figure that out here in just a minute. But uh, I am in the uh, Prairie Oceans exhibit, uh, which is a fun exhibit that was brought to us by um, Chuck Bonner and Ray Troll. Um, but one of the, one of the things that I really like about this exhibit is they give a nod to the very people we've been discussing. So if you look from left to right here, you've got a, um, a few nice portraits that were done by uh, Chuck Bonner here. And, um, from left to right, you've got George M. Sternberg in the middle, you've got Charles Sternberg and all the way to the right, you've got George F. Sternberg. So these are the three guys that sort of um, sort of really impacted, I guess, Kansas paleontology, but more broadly paleontology in North America and even across the world. So um, hello, Betty. I'm looking forward to better, better weather too. Uh, and I, I really do want to get outside and do stuff. I will try my best. Uh, gosh, who knows how long this is going to last. I hope not too much longer. But anyways, back to the subject at hand. So today I'm kind of just going to go over who George F. Sternberg was. Uh, as I've kind of established in the last couple of um, live feeds I've done, George F. Sternberg was the eldest son of Charles Sternberg. And uh, he had two brothers. He had... Charles M. And he had Levi, whose middle initial I can't think of right now. Uh, those were his two brothers. They actually ended up in Canada. I believe Charles or Charlie, as, as he's referred to sometimes, uh, was part of the Geological Society of Canada. Uh, and he was based out of Ottawa. And it, it's, I guess, Levi that did a lot of work with the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada. Um, and again, I've got to correct myself. I was confused. I had it the other way around. I thought it was Charles that was at Royal Ontario Museum, and I thought it was Levi that that was part of the geological survey, and I had that crosswired. I was confused. So um, that's interesting. Uh, I've told this story before, but uh, years and years ago, about 13 or 14 years ago, uh, I was doing some research uh, along with my colleague, John Scanella, who is now the curator at the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana. But we were looking at uh, changes in shapes and size of dinosaur heads, and we traveled to the Royal Ontario Museum to do some work on actually alligator and crocodile heads, uh, as well as measure some dinosaur heads. And while we were there, the curator there um, uh, Dave Evans, I believe, uh, was 
the curator there, um, is still the curator there, kept referring to a bunch of dinosaur heads that I was sitting next to and saying, look, this is the Sternberg collection. And I kind of smiled and nodded because I'd heard of Sternberg, but I didn't know who they were exactly. But clearly it was important to the Royal Ontario Museum. And little did I know uh, that I would be <laughs> discussing this many years later in detail uh, and how vast and sort of confusing the Sternberg legacy is. So the Sternberg collection there, he must have been referring to as um, was managed by Levi, at least in part. And um, I'm sure uh, their father, Charles, had a lot to do with it. And I would imagine the two brothers also took part in helping build that collection. So that's kind of interesting. So let's talk about George Sternberg. Um, let me flip the camera over. So this is actually a life exhibit. And I apologize for the light. It's very dark in here. Um, for some reason, our main lights are not turning on, um, but I think we can probably see enough. So what this is, is, hi, Mackenzie, how are you? Thanks for watching. Um, so this is a, a model or life exhibit or uh, whatever you want to call it of George M. Sternberg. And you can see here, this is a, a representation of him later in life, circa 1952. And uh, here he is um, portrayed as excavating the famous fish within a fish fossil. And um, clearly that is one of our more uh, famous fossils in our collection and one of the things that he is certainly remembered for in this area. So that's kind of our representation of him in the exhibit. It's one of the first things um, that you see when you come into our main fossil gallery. Uh, hey, Mackenzie, I'm glad you're good. Yeah, we're all hanging in here. Uh, if you happen to catch my last couple of live feeds, I was struggling, I'll admit. Uh, I was trying to do them from home and it just was not, I don't know, it was not working for me. So I decided to break quarantine and come to work. Uh, as you can tell, I have no problem social distancing here because, well, there's nobody here to come in contact with. So I think I can probably get away with it here. So I am talking about George Sternberg. And this is kind of an interesting uh, little uh, exhibit here. This is, this is a, sort of a bit of a historical exhibit. Um, so what you've got over here is actually a, uh, this is a skin of an ocelot. And the story behind this is um, from 1923 to 1924, George F. Sternberg was actually hired by the Field Museum in Chicago to take part in a fossil hunting expedition in South America. And he was a bit of a collector of many things outside of fossils. So in this case, he um, hunted and collected uh, um, study skins and um, some different taxidermy specimens. So this was something he collected in uh, Argentina um, and, and brought it back for study and display. Um, this is interesting. This is a typewriter that was used by Levi Sternberg when he was uh, working at the Royal Ontario Museum. So there's our connection right there. Um, got a couple of books here. Um, these are uh, George H. Sternberg's biographies. And I didn't realize that there was a sequel to The Life of a Fossil Hunter, which I was reading from yesterday. Uh, apparently, he did a second book called Hunting Dinosaurs. So I'm going to have to track that one down and read that and get back to you on that. This is a watch that was owned by Charles Sternberg. Pretty cool. And then more centric to George M. Sternberg. This was his hat that he wore out in the field. I've got that on display. Um, down below are our field tools, which is really cool. Um, so these are really things that he would have used out in the field. Um, we've got a number of, of uh, field journals here, which is really cool. I really like this. This one has the Canada Geological Survey. And that's just kind of a cool thing. Um, I'm going to have to get a hold of, of Dave Evans and see if I can uh, 
um, get some information about what they've got about the Sternbergs in their museum. Uh, and I'll have to report back and see what I find out. This is really significant. So this tool is actually a finishing tool that was used by George, which is actually kind of part of his signature. So if you um, come over here, and I've already talked about this a couple of times, but one of the really cool things about George Sternberg was he took all the knowledge that he learned from his dad and he kind of took excavation and then prep and display to sort of the next level. So all of this texture that you see here was done by hand using a tool that was very similar to the one that we just looked at in the case. So this sort of this, this texture and color was sort of his signature his signature tr uh, trademark in prep work. So it's very easy to distinguish a fossil that was prepped and put on display by George, uh, George F. Sternberg. Um, I wish I knew what the story was about the white uh, halo around the Gillicus inside the the Zyphactinus here. I don't know why it's a different color than the rest of the plaster around it. I don't know if it was something that somebody did later on uh, after it was put on display or if this was something that that George had done or what. So if anybody out there has worked at the Sternberg or knows Sternberg history or knows the history of Fish Within a Fish and knows what the story is about this sort of white or gray halo around the Gillicus, let me know. Uh, it's a mystery to me. So again, as I was saying, George Sternberg sort of became the master of prep and display of really impressive fossils. And I suspect um, one of the things he did also was sort of stain the bones of the fossil so they would show up a little bit better. Um, I don't know that for sure but it certainly looks that way to me that he used some sort of of pigment or, or stain to sort of make them look a little bit darker against the plaster. Um, the other thing is if you look at this fin, there's a huge portion of this dorsal fin here that is reconstructed. And as you see, it's very, very, very difficult to, to, to tell what has been replaced compared to what is actual fossil in here. And that's one of the things that, that George Sternberg was just a master of. Uh, when I was doing research as a grad student, part of what I was doing was um, taking bone samples where I drill small sort of eraser, pencil eraser size holes in bones to, to do isotope analysis on those uh, bones. And every once in a while, I would get a bone that I thought was an actual fossil bone, and when I'd get in there, I'd realize that it was just plaster that had been reconstructed to look like an actual fossil. And he was so good at matching the color and texture that even I, who had at that point worked on fossils for seven or eight years, um, I still was fooled by it. So very, very good at what he's done. So we can kind of walk through the gallery and just see how much of George's work is out here. Um, this is a part of a protospirina. These are the pectoral fins. And again, you see that texture, you see that color. That was all done by hand. Um, and you just don't see work like that anymore. Uh, it would be really cool to see uh, if there's any moving footage of him actually uh, finishing this stuff out. There might be in our video presentation regarding the fish within a fish. Um, there's another example. Uh, again, this is a Pachyrhizotis, and it's actually got gut contents in it, um, and it looks like maybe some soft tissue preservation. Um, but again, you can see that really nice um, hand-made uh, texture around it and that color. Um, to sort of mimic the limestone. So just in that case alone, you see several 
Sternberg prepped fossils. This is a protostega, it's a big sea turtle. And again, you see that hand texture, you know, sort of George's way of, of signing his work. Um, so those of you who have museums uh, nearby you that may contain Sternberg fossils, uh, look for this texture. And if you see this, this texture, it's a pretty good bet that George Sternberg prepped it and, and collected it and sent it to whatever museum that you may be viewing it in. Here's a, this is an ichthyosaur head. This was actually not from Kansas. This is from Wyoming. But again, set in that plaster and textured by hand. We've seen this before. This is our Megacephalosaurus, formerly designated as Brachycineus. Uh, but now we know it's a type specimen of, of Megacephalosaurus. Again, you see that, that texturing. Um, here's a flipper of a Mosasaur. Again, you see that texture. And then this is probably my favorite fossil in the museum. Maybe it's my second favorite. I might show you my favorite later. But this is definitely, you know, obviously this is a George Sternberg fossil. This is a 30 foot long Mosasaur. This is a Tylosaurus. Um, this is Tylosaurus pro rigor. And he's about 30 feet long. Very, very nice, um, well articulated, very well reconstructed Mosasaur. And definitely a showpiece. And then, you know, you move on to dinosaur fossils. I don't know that any of these, well, this might be a, a Sternberg prepped thing. If you look closely, you can see there is that uh, sort of hand um, uh, stippled texture in the orbit and the space of the jaw there. Um, this is a Corythosaurus. So this would be a Lambiosaurine duckbill dinosaur. And this is the kind of dinosaur that they had rows and rows of at the Royal Ontario Museum when I was there. I don't know if it was a Parasaur collection or if it was Corythosaur. I'll have to go back and look at my old pictures. Um, so again, just a real good example of George Sternberg's work. Um, so we're gonna kind of go around and explore some of the things like We've seen the os a lot. Uh, so we know that that's George Sternberg collected many things outside of fossils. Um, he seemed to kind of have an interest in a little bit of everything. Um, when I first had started here at the museum as a graduate assistant, uh, we had just sort of reorganized and reestablished what our mission was at the museum to focus more specifically on the natural history of Kansas and the evolutionary forces that have impacted it over time. And so we kind of did a, a purge of some of the collections that we have. We had a lot of historical artifacts um, that um, I think Sternberg and then others that followed had sort of collected here at the museum. Uh, and we had to decide what we wanted to have in our collection that actually focused more on our, on our uh, mission statement. So we ended up uh, <laughs> having to pick and choose. Uh, so a lot of historical stuff we actually donated to the uh, Historical Society of Ellis County and now they are in possession of a lot of the historical stuff. But we still have a lot of people coming through asking if we have those collections. One of the things that we did manage to hang on to, and this is kind of a <laughs> kind of a fun thing, I know a lot of people come here to see this, is this is the shrunken head um, and supposedly collected by Sternberg from Ecuador. Um, and there is some discussion as to whether this is, this is truly what they say it is or if not. So one of the, one of the theories, one of the ideas here is that this is actually not, in fact, a human head, that this is a monkey head uh, that has been sort of taxidermied and doctored up to look like a, a human head. Um, but this is one of those fun sort of strange 
artifacts um, that that would have been collected, uh, likely when uh, when Sternberg went to South America um, for his expedition with the Field Museum. Um, but what I've heard is by this time, the um, the tribes that actually did the real head shrinking trophy thing had caught wind that there were tourists or I guess adventurers that would pay money for shrunken heads and they found a way to <laughs> produce said shrunken heads um, for a price <laughs> and they were using monkeys. So this may or may not be the actual article. Uh, we'll leave that a mystery. One of the mysteries of the museum. So um, that's always fun. I have a lot of people come through. And even when I'm out doing outreach in crazy places, like across the, straight, the state, uh, and, you know, like I, I do a lot of stuff, uh, um, even as far as uh, east as Topeka. Um, and so when I'm over in places like that, people will come up to me and ask me, do you still have the shrunken head? And, well, yes, we do. That's one of the things we kept, probably for that reason, because people remember it. Um, so that's one of the stranger parts of, of our collection that I think George is probably responsible for. Um, so I'm going to come downstairs for a second, and I wanted to sort of show you a couple of pictures here that we have on our wall when you come in. So this is sort of our our entrance to our main gallery. You go up the stairs and that's where we just were. But this is our, our uh, sort of curator and director hall of fame here. So you'll notice that here's, here's our George F. portrait. He was actually the second curator of museums. So this is our first, which is C.W. Miller. Uh, and he was the curator of the museum from 1914 to 1933. And then you have George F. Sternberg. And you'll notice that he is curator of museums. And the reason it's museums plural is because initially um, we were a group of museums that were housed in the same building. So you had the the um, herbarium, you had the, the zoological or biological collections, you had the fossils, but they were considered to be sort of separate entities. So that's why um, if you look at Merle Walker, he's got the same title, director of museums, um, because at that point they were still considered individual, sort of almost separate museums. And then there's Dr. Richard Zeff, Zakchevsky. Um, so I, I believe I was his last graduate student. Uh, he took me, I guess it would have been in 2010, and he retired before I graduated. Um, but he is a curator emeritus. We still see him every morning when things are normal. I haven't seen him since the, the quarantine, which is probably good. Um, but that's Dr. Zachevsky, and you'll notice at this point he is the director of the Sternberg Memorial Museum from 1973 to 1994. Wow, Dr. Z, 1973, that was the year I was born. And then you have Dr. Choate, who was the director of the museum. Um, wow, he was director of the Museum of the High Plains from 73 to 94. So that must have been a separate museum from the Sternberg Museum. And then Director of Museums, again, there's that title, from 80 to 94. And then Director of the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, which I would imagine is in its current form now. So he was the last director. Now our current director, as you know, is Reese Barrick. We don't have his picture up here um, because, well, he's still current, I guess. So this is Elam Bartholomew. Uh, I believe Reese has talked about him. He was our, our curator of um, the herbarium. 
And then there's Dr. Frederick Albertson. Again, he was curator of the E. Lambala Bartholomew Herbarium, for now we know who the herbarium is named. Here's Dr. Howard Reynolds. Uh, the Howard Reynolds Nature Trail is, is named in his honor. Uh, he passed away just a few years ago at the age of 99. So he was our, our, I guess, our last curator of the herbarium uh, before Dr. Joe, Joe Thomason, who is the current Elam Bartholomew Herbarium curator. And he is a paleobotanist. And if you ever, ever get a chance to do any sort of workshops with him, I highly suggest it. So he is a professor emeritus, but he's also, I think, still the curator of the Bartholomew Herbarium. So there we go. There's your, your history of the museum as it sits now. Um, as I said, there are a couple more things I wanted to look at. I apologize that the glass on the pictures are shiny, so you get reflections of me. Uh, but I, I like these pictures, and I think they're kind of telling. So um, we've got a great collection of historical photos in our expeditions room. So um, I'm going to show those to you, and then we're going to go look at some stuff in collections. So I believe that's George Sternberg, and it might be his, his younger brother Levi there. I'm not sure, uh, but it's just a fun a fun photograph. And this one is actually what I'm after here because in the background you see some really familiar fossils here and I apologize for the reflections on the glass, but there is our Megacephalosaurus. And then in the background you see a, a fossil turtle that I believe would be on display over by where our um, current bringing fossils to life um, exhibit is. And uh, it's hanging out with our desert spurthi tortoises. Look at that, that's a rhinoceros. In fact, I know exactly where that rhinoceros is. We'll go visit here in a minute. And again, you can kind of see a bunch of stuff that he has collected here. And it looks like he's holding the head of a mosasaur. And I don't exactly know which Mosasaur. It, it might be the, the Mosasaur that we just looked at that's on display in the, uh, in the main fossil gallery, but I don't think so. I think that head is too small. So anyways, there's George Sternberg in his workshop. Here's a good photograph of, this is 1952. So this is during the excavation of the fish within a fish. So you see the old, uh, it looks like 19, maybe 1930s era pickup truck there. And then there's the fossil being excavated of the Xyphactinus. And then this is a cool photograph. This is uh, George um, F. Sternberg with his, his father, Charles, I believe. Very cool. All right, so now that we've seen those photos, I want you to look at this one one more time. Just take a good look and see if you can memorize some of the, some of the stuff in there. All right, so we're going to go find some of these fossils. So i got to go this way. Hopefully my keys work. Um, it's so nice to be at the museum. I can't tell you how much I hate it just sitting in my basement. It's really, really hard to talk about this stuff when you're stuck in a basement. Um, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so, um, hopefully this is a little bit more interesting than staring at me mumbling in my basement. I apologize for that. We live in weird times. So, we are headed to collections now. Now, if I lose signal... I apologize, the signal is sort of hit and miss here. So if I cut out, it's because I'm in something that is akin to a concrete bunker. So <laughs> signal may or may not work, but I thought it'd be fun to, to uh, check out collections. All right, so we've been in here before.
but now we've seen some of those cool pictures. Um, so we'll start with this one. This is Megacephalosaurus, previously referred to as Brachycineus. And you'll notice it has been taken out of its, um, its tomb of, of George Sternberg worked plaster. Um, and that's so we could see the underside of the skull, which is what we're looking at. So you're looking at, at basically the palate bones here. So that's very cool. So there's one of those fossils that we saw hanging in the background, but it looks a little different because it's no longer in a frame of plaster. And I think I started with that story early on when we started doing this stuff. And then a different perspective. This is the reconstructed three-dimensional, uh, as lifelike as we can get, skull of Megacephalosaurus, which is a very, very impressive um, skull mount, and hopefully eventually we'll see it out in the main fossil gallery when we get things back to normal and figured out. We are actually in the process of, of coming up with some ideas for uh, reorganize, reorganizing some of the exhibits, but that all takes time and money, and there are only a few of us on staff, so things can only happen so quickly. So this is fun. Now, you remember there are sort of those rhinoceros things behind him in those photographs? Check this out. Here they are. And again, you'll notice that you've got that sort of hand-chiseled stippling or texture in the matrix. I believe this is matrix. This may be, this almost feels like epoxy or plaster. Uh, I always assumed it was just matrix left in the, in the skull, but I think, I think he actually infilled it with a plaster-like material, and then he, he sort of made that texture. So again, just sort of his way of saying, hey, I was here. And it's kind of a cool thing, because it has stood the test of time, and it sort of bears his signature. Again, you see the same kind of stuff. This is a little bit darker. But I, I believe these were in the background of that photograph. Um, gosh, I wonder what Mosasaur had he was holding. Um, so again, uh, just sort of an idea of what's in our collections. Um, let's see, over here, I think. Um, well, now that everything's organized and we've got official collections people working here and everything has been digitized and cleaned up. I can't find anything. <laughs> it wasn't as organized when I used to work in here and it was just chaotic enough I could function. I don't know that I can function in this now that it's all organized. So this is me wandering around collections because I miss it. You wanna see my favorite fossil in here? So this is my favorite fossil besides the big Mosasaur on display, the Tylosaurus. So this is an Actinosaurus. It's sort of a medium size Mosasaur. I don't know why I like this guy so much, but I do. I don't think this is a George Sternberg fossil because it doesn't have that texture. Although it's got the same sort of construction and um, the same sort of color, so it might be. Um, but one of the things I like is you can see those pterygoid teeth right here. Um, and you can also see how the jaw works. It's, it's so cool. The other really nice thing is actually there's some uh, skin impressions and some soft tissue. Um, so this is all sort of cartilaginous material here. That is kind of rare. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of the, the sort of the cartilage stuff that sort of connected the chest pieces together. So it's just a cool little, it's about half, well, maybe not quite half the, it's the front part of the Mosasaur. So just nothing to do with George, George Sternberg. It's just one of the things that I like. So there we are. Do we have any questions for me while I'm wandering around in here? Uh, I've noticed the last couple of live feeds I've did, um, not a whole lot of questions, but then 
there wasn't a whole lot of room for questions. It was just me kind of telling you stuff. So let me see, do I have any questions? All right, no questions at the moment. All right, well, that was sort of my, my morning's discussion uh, in the museum um, and my very, very, very thorough history of the Sternberg legacy. But that's sort of very, very generalized, sort of what I know so far. And, uh, you know, it's always an adventure when you're learning about this stuff because even in this attempt to tell people about the, the Sternberg legacy and the natural history of this area of Kansas, I have actually learned how large in feet is the Mosasaur I just showed. Okay, so if I were to guess how large this guy was, um, let me flip you back over here. All right, so this is, like I said, this is, I don't think this is quite half the Mosasaur. And this, this particular thing, I would say, is about, well, what we've got uh, so far is about maybe six feet in length. So I would guess he would be 15-ish feet long, maybe 20 feet long in life if the rest of his skeleton was here. You'll notice he's only got his front two flippers, so the back is completely missing. And um, anyone planning on going any digs this summer? Well, Ashley, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to plan anything right now. Um, because we live in such weird times. Normally, uh, yes, there would be some digs going on during the summer, but right now all of our students have gone home and we don't know when they'll be back. And usually it's students that do um, most of the excavating with us. Uh, we offer a summer camp uh, that utilizes both college students, high school students, and I think middle schoolers as well um, during different time periods. I mean, not all at once. Uh, but I don't know what the status of those camps are. Right now, we're still planning on moving forward, but I just don't have a solid answer for you whether things are going to happen like they normally do or not. So, um, again, just uh, <laughs> an example of uncertain times where we're working on, I think, some contingency plans just in case things don't work out. So um, our camps director, David Levering, is a good person to um, interface with. You can find him on our webpage at sternberg.fhsu.edu. Uh, I was told recently that the, the previous addresses that I'd given with the www in front doesn't work. So just type in sternberg.fhsu.edu. You can find David Levering on our, um, our Contact Us page. Uh, he's, you can find him in our staff um, bios. And he's the guy to ask about summer camps and whether they'll, they'll be doing any active excavation of anything. Um, and there's probably a lot of information about what what's going on um, on his camps page. So uh, I would refer you to him at the moment. Uh, as far as any digs that are open to the general public, not a lot right now, um, just because we don't necessarily uh, do those kinds of things. Um, uh, first of all, we don't have the manpower, and second of all, um, we've got a lot of students to work with. So. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of it for the day. So unless there are any more questions, uh, I'm going to sign off for the morning. And I don't know if I'm going to be back this afternoon or if it'll be Reese, but one of us will be here, maybe both, um, and we'll do another live feed. So if you think of any questions, uh, comments, or anything you want to talk about, go ahead and put that in the text area and we will see you this afternoon. Please like and share our videos. Uh, we want to reach out to as many people as possible who are stuck in their houses and we will see you this afternoon. This is Ian and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.